In today's video, we're going to discuss some of the reasons why a bloodhound might not be the right breed for you. We're going to look into their exercise needs, any medical issues linked to this breed, and plenty of other things that you should seriously consider before potentially adding this breed to your family. Welcome back to the Femro Bloodhound Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FemroCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Femro Bloodhound Show. So, let's dive into some of the reasons why you possibly shouldn't get a bloodhound. You may have seen bloodhounds in films and on TV programs, which is maybe why you want one, but have you considered everything about what it takes to look after a bloodhound? If you don't like the idea of being drooled on or filing slobber up your walls, then this breed might not be for you. Bloodhounds are large dogs, they require a lot of space and are not best suited to apartment living. They certainly need a family with a big backyard, but one that is also secure and has a high fence. Bloodhounds are once bred to be scent hounds and they used to track people and hunt wild boar and deer. This means that if they catch the scent of something they find interest interesting whilst in an unsecured backyard, they'll go off on their own little adventure. Bloodhounds can track a scent for days, so it's important you keep them safe with tall fences. It's also a good idea to teach your bloodhound a perfect recall before trying to let them off the lead. They're a large dog that can intimidate smaller dogs by bounding up to smaller dogs. It's also essential that you train your bloodhound not to jump up at people from a young age. Bloodhounds can be known to become aggressive with some dogs of the same sex. They also have a prey drive so it's also not advised that they're left alone with small animals. Due to their size, it's best not to leave your bloodhound alone with small children either, as they could accidentally knock them over and hurt them due to their sheer size. This breed can also become shy when around people that they're not familiar with. They can be strong-willed and very independent, so should always be socialised to as many different situations, faces, sights, sounds and smells as possible during puppyhood. This will ensure that they are a well-balanced dog. They seem to be happiest when they're given a job to do, like scent tracking. This can be time consuming to train, but will pay off in the end. Another thing to discuss with bloodhounds is that they can be quite loud. They in fact make a baying noise, which sounds like a howl. Bloodhounds were bred to make these howling noises to alert hunters to where they were tracking. They also have a very strong doggy smell. Bloodhounds have a very oily coat, which gets greasy and creates this dog smell. The folds in their skin also can add to this smell as they trap dirt, sweat and food in them and if not properly clean can cause infections. You should groom your bloodhound every four to six weeks. Um, the bloodhound also has an amazing sense of smell and strong smelling shampoos can cause discomfort so it's best to use a fragrance free shampoo that can be a little bit more expensive than the generic fragranced ones. Whilst you're grooming your bloodhound you should ensure you're clipping their nails, checking the anal glands and cleaning their ears out too. Bloodhounds don't actually reach their maturity until they're around two years old. Even though they become fully grown at about 18 months, they are large puppies. A lot of people are not aware of this when getting their bloodhound puppies. Owners commonly assume that their overly excitable and fully grown bloodhound is just a naughty dog and is not that they're still in a puppy mode. This is why it's especially important to get your bloodhound trained from an early age. Another good reason for early training is that you'll find your bloodhound will want to put anything that fits into its mouth and try and eat it, which can be extremely dangerous and end up with a trip to the vet and a very costly vet bill. Bloodhounds need a calm, consistent leader who they can look up to for guidance and direction at all times. Some health issues that are common in bloodhounds include patella luxation. This is when the kneecap dislocates. This usually starts to happen at around four months of age. Patella luxation is usually fixed by surgery. Hip and elbow dysplasia. This is when the hip or elbow doesn't sit properly in the socket. This will eventually lead to arthritis and cause pain and discomfort for your dog. If not treated promptly, this can also lead to lameness. 
Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria K9 Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. And troping is also common. This is when the eyelids roll inwards and causes the eyelid to become painful. The last health issue we're going to talk about is the skin fold dermatitis. This is when bloodhounds have a deep fold in the skin that rub against the skin and trap moisture. This causes infections that causes skin inflammation known as dermatitis. This then leads to other skin conditions called pyoderma. To prevent this, plenty of cleaning the area will be needed and sometimes surgery is also needed to prevent this. There are plenty of pros and cons to adding a bloodhound into your family. It's so important to make sure that you do your research before purchasing or rehoming any breed. There are so many dogs like the bloodhound being purchased without this knowledge. Then owners soon realise they don't have the time to exercise or train their bloodhounds, or they realise they're a lot bigger breed than they first expected and don't have enough room for them. There are too many dogs in shelters, so please only commit to this beautiful breed if you're certain you have what it takes to look after them for the rest of their life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you never miss any future uploads. We have regular Bloodhound videos dropping here every single week. So, I can't wait to see you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Bloodhound Show.